Um, welcome back to the 30 Minute Special. I have another wonderful guest with me, our comedian extraordinaire. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Ashley Manning. I'm, as you say, I'm a comedian, um, but I dabble in kind of other bits and bob as well. Um, at the moment, I'm working on locations in film and mm. uh, in the past kind of previous to the pandemic i was working in festivals and producing live shows and stuff like that so mm. um that's who i am in a nutshell i guess that's <laughs> actually how we met i met mm -hmm. um my the girl that was on prior megan we met we uh, she was the covid officer on the set that we met right she's okay. the location officer on the set that we I'm met i'm the location officer yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> So, so the first ever comedian I've ever had. Well, um, second. Okay. I, mean, uh, I had this guy called uh, Silas. He His main thing is acting. Okay. He does a bit of stand-up on the side, but you're like 100%. Word on the 100%. street is she taught like Kevin Hart, Bill Burr, everything they know. You know, Jim Jeffries owes her. Yeah, it was career. all me. I they, they just, They'd be nowhere without me. You know, yeah, what yeah. can I say? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> let's get straight down to it. Why... Why stand up? Why it's, in my personal opinion, the hardest of all creative industries? I Yeah, I mean, I do get that question a lot. Um, mm. A lot of people kind of would ask me, how did you ever start doing something like that? Or, or uh, you know, people ask me, do I get nervous a lot as well? Um, and then, you know, I've even had actor friends that are just like, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, but it's, the same as what you do but it's mm. not really um i because because i find acting terrifying you know I, mm. I have no idea what i would do if i had to pretend to be a certain way which sounds strange because i guess there is a performance aspect to stand up as well mm. um so i don't know it, it it's one of those things that doesn't really make sense and most comics will i i think i've heard a lot of people say that they just sort of fell into it as well. I was a big fan of stand-up for a long time. Mm. Um, I watched stand-up DVDs a lot growing up. And uh, then when I first went to university, I joined a comedy society. And mm. that was where I sort of started to see, you know, if anybody ever asks me, how do you get into the mindset of being able to approach doing stand-up ever? Mm. Uh, the thing that I will always say is that you need to be seeing people learn to do stand up mm. you need to watch people do open mics and you need to um just see a lot of of lower level stand up because a lot of people when they think of stand up they just think of live at the apollo yeah, and yeah, yeah. all of that stuff which would be terrifying if you were to do that <laughs> with no experience um but i think that going to see a lot of stand up does a few different things firstly it just exposes you to the process. You know, you will, if you go to enough open mics, you'll see the same people working on their material. So you'll learn, mm. oh, that's how that kind of builds up and comes together. Um, but another thing that it does is it kind of makes you realize, I know I could do better than that. Okay. Because what will happen is you'll just, you'll see so much bad stand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and... I guess as well, the only other thing that it would do then is is it just, uh, it makes you realize that even when somebody does badly, you still recognize that they've gotten up and they've tried and they've, mm. they've achieved something and you don't judge them as much as you think people would judge you. Mm. And you kind of just get used to that, like, oh, you have to learn to do this. You oh, don't okay. just get up and do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was going to ask this question a little later but <laughs> we're gonna ask this now have you ever bombed on stage oh my god yes no stand-up like no comic has ever just you know glided through their career with no bombs yeah. every single stand-up has bombed what's your what's your worst bombing story my worst one um i think the worst gig i had was uh <laughs> it was in a place called Listowel in County Kerry in mm. very rural Ireland, mm. which I'm, I'm from rural Ireland, yeah. but this was like two hours driving on roads that didn't have markings. Yeah. And <laughs> it was very far away. It was the week before the um, repeal the eighth abortion referendum oh, okay. in Ireland. Yeah. 
And I, as had most other comics had been doing up to that uh, uh, referendum, had been wearing, you know, repeal the eighth and mm. and vote yes and all this sort of thing. Everybody mm. was wearing the gear and yeah. a lot of people were doing material about mm. uh, the, the referendum and everything. And all the, the closer I got to where this gig was, the more no posters I was seeing. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. vote no, uh, pro-life, save lives, all mm. this sort of thing. And I was just like, oh, oh dear, oh dear. I turn up to the venue and the compare is like, you're not wearing that, are you? Mm. And I said, I have nothing else to wear. Wow. <laughs> so um, I got up on stage. I was also, at that point, I was still relatively early. I think I was still in my first year of doing mm. stand-up. I'm about four years in now. Um I was in my first year and I it was one of the longer times that I'd been booked for. So oh, okay, yeah. most when you're starting out, you might get five minutes, you might get seven minutes. I'm a mm. solid 10 minute spot now. Yeah. Um, I, I'll get booked for the occasional 15. This was a 15. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever been on stage for 15 minutes. No. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah. It really <laughs> It's weird when you're 15 minutes watching something mm -hmm. isn't that long. But when you're actually there, when you're it's doing like, it. Uh, <laughs> and when you're bombing. Mm. One minute is long. Yeah. Like, it's so long. And I I was doing all my material and there was one solitary woman who mm. seemed to be enjoying it. Mm. And about halfway through, I lost her. Oh. <laughs> I saw the light die in her eyes. Oh, brutal. And the rest of it was just, it was just a survival. It was just get now to the you, end. Are you, you hear a lot of... Um, Comics, this might just be an American thing, but you hear a lot of comics saying they don't get paid for the gigs they do yeah. sometimes because like, they're meant to get paid, but maybe the show didn't do as well as the club mm -hmm. wanted, so then they just not pay you or something. Like yeah, that. there's a lot of unpaid work in stand-up. Like, I, I have not ever earned enough to start paying taxes on it. Oh, yeah. You know, like, it's really, really low paid. Um, you'll do so many gigs for nothing. Mm. I'm pretty sure that gig... I drove two hours there and back okay. and I don't think I got paid for that. Oh. Like it's, you do, but, but it had a good lineup. It was being booked by somebody who was well-respected. So mm. it was like, Oh, maybe I should be in with these people. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you now I, I wouldn't do that gig now. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Oh man. I just, I just, I, I do generally have a, a lot of respect. I, I mean, I've seen like I'll never. I'll tell you this. I'll never in my life ever go to a comedy show just because I can't handle it if someone's like not doing well. Like I'd like I'd be like oh, I'd cringe. I love that. So man. I don't like it. <laughs> I um I don't know if you ever watched a film called Joker. I haven't actually watched it, which is bizarre for a stand up. It's, um, I just it was just I yeah. But I just missed it, and then it felt like it was too late. Yeah, it's, it's when Joaquin Phoenix is doing like the comedy show, mm -hmm. and it's like so cringe. I'm like, I had to, I covered my ears, <laughs> closed my eyes in the cinema. I just could not do it. It's so brutal. Yeah, it's the same as like why I tend not to go to like live shows. Like mm -hmm. I went to my live, sh the first ever live show, like a couple of weeks back. It was actually really good, thankfully. But it's just I, mad respect for people that can go up there and. <laughs> just do like show who they are if that mm -hmm. makes sense um what 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 would you how can i explain this being a female in the uh -huh. comedy space what are the stereotypes you face Right. I mean, that is a can of worms okay. that you've just opened. Yeah. Uh what are the stereotypes? I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes uh, about, I mean, being a woman in stand-up isn't really that much different to being a woman in life. Okay. Everywhere you go, there is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a world of, of dichotomies. Mm. You, you are one or the other. You're either the virgin or the whore. You're, yeah. you're uh, you know, you'll, so in stand-up that will translate to either you're the part, the one who does the filthy material yeah, yeah, yeah. or you're the one who doesn't talk about sex at all. Um, mm. You know, it's, it's always one or the other. And yeah, I think it's just whatever you, whatever you do is going to be judged. So like tenfold to what male comics will deal with. Um, 
And I guess that's the stereotype at the end of the day is just that everything you do is just judged a bit harsher. Mm. And um, I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes about how most women in stand up are a there's a lot of queer women in stand up and mm. you know we all have our hair dyed or mm. like there's there's what's known as the f- the female comedian haircut which is mm. just like a short bob oh, which yeah. i'm not going to lie i usually have i'm yeah. growing out my hair a bit okay. at the moment um yeah there's no hard and fast uh, stereotypes but it's just a lot of the same bullshit you get everywhere mm. else really have you ever met like a a famous well <laughs> i don't know what you consider famous but like a a very well-known TV comedian, would you uh-huh. say? That's on like like Jimmy Carl or whatever. Have you uh-huh. ever met one of them and have a like? Or have you ever met one of them? I yeah, I guess I've met quite a few people. I don't want to. You've asked me the question, so I guess that doesn't count as name dropping. Mm. Um, I I you know I've supported Fern Brady on tour, which was really fun, and I got to support Alison Spittle as well. Um, I've met, you know, Jade Adams is somebody that I, I love and I've had a good time with. Um, Rosie Jones is brilliant. Uh, these are all names that will be, you know, people that are on some of the, uh, panel shows and, um, Jade does a lot of presenting work. Um, so uh, I, they're just a few of the names off the top of my head. There's definitely more. I, yeah. Is that the, uh, <laughs> is that the, the aim to be on like no they won't put me on television (laughs) why not why not i'm one of the filthy ones um (laughs) no i do i i'm going for darker material and uh, i wouldn't ever get booked for kids shows or tv or anything like that there was you might do pretty good on like (laughs) eight out of ten cats and stuff if I, Jimmy maybe. Carr is on, if, <laughs> if they hire Jimmy Carr, they're going to hire you. I would love to do the show. If anybody's watching that has any connections, the show that I would love to do is uh, the Roast Battle. I would uh, love to do yeah. Comedy Central Roast Battle. That's yeah. just, I. it's such a cool show. I've done Roast Battles a few times. I have probably, I think I've got like a 50-50 win-lose mm. rate. Um, uh, they're great fun. And I use Roast Battle to actually... I, uh, write a lot of stand up yeah. sometimes because when you're trying to do a roast, you are trying to insult somebody so much, mm. um, and usually you have to get kind of inventive. Uh, there was one of the shows that I I did. I was put up against this guy, and he was just a skinny white guy, and I was just like, "There is nothing unusual about you." Yeah. So I'm gonna pick a characteristic and I'm going to go as far as I can with that characteristic Mm. and I just picked the fact that he was skinny Mm. and made all the jokes about that and I ended up using some of the material I wrote for that in a stand-up routine for years Mm, um I would still pull it out here and there you know um because what you then do is you take that material that's about this one person mm. and then you just create a character in a story that yeah, you tell yeah. on stage and you just make it about this thing then you never know <laughs> man. you might you might you might i think you you probably the chances of you getting booked to tv are so high if you do have that dirty we'll see thing, <laughs> all the comedy shows um, like panel shows that i watch all have like 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 i say people mm-hmm. like jimmy carr or um uh what's What's the guy, a Scottish guy, Ginger, retired now? Oh, Frankie Boyle? Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did like, he really went crazy on his last tour because he was never going to do it yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, he's still working, I think. He's got um, uh, he's got his own TV show now mm. called um, The New World Order, I believe, mm. which uh, I haven't really watched. I don't have a TV license, so I, I'm like one of these people that actually doesn't watch the things that I can't afford to pay for. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so you I haven't watched you a lot of like these panel don't. shows. Yeah. Um, I watch most of them like just recorded on YouTube. Do you yeah, know? I do um, watch some of the clips on YouTube because I'm able to do that. Um, but mm. yeah, the New World Order show is pretty good, and I wouldn't mind being on that as well. If any, you know. That's <laughs> that's um, yeah, I just i I just love the whole creativity with the whole comedian thing. And um, what would you say is in my opinion, the main scenes are the British com- comedy and mm-hmm. American comedy. Yeah. What would you say are the difference between them? 
So if there are any. Uh, there's definitely mm. there is definitely differences. Um, I haven't gigged in America. Um, I just haven't made it there yet. My it is definitely a big aim for the next couple of years is to mm. get over to America. Um, but mostly, um, the big kind of feature or the the kind of distinguishing feature of the British scene is that it is very much centered around um the kind of festival circuit and um being able to be intriguing and thought provoking uh you know with the edinburgh festival uh that's on every year there's um things like the newcomer award or uh there's just there's loads of different comedy awards and people kind of dedicate themselves to being able to write a show that will get featured in at mm. least the nominations for those awards if not winning them um and so a lot of people will try and create shows that have that say something that seems important and i say seems important because you know <laughs> mm. they don't always hit the they don't always hit the mark but they're trying um mm. you know so people will try and, and say something as well as making you laugh you know um there was one of the bigger shows in the past few years was hannah gadsby's nanette um which uh, there was a lot of talk about because many people argued that it was stand-up tragedy mm. rather than actual comedy you know she talked about really really heavy things in that show um but at at the end of the day she had an hour to do with what she pleased and mm. you know um I, she she created something that was definitely revolutionary and and very interesting and important um and whether or not it stand up doesn't like does it matter mm. <laughs> shut up and listen to oh, the yeah, show yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's another that's another question um do you think comedians should also, what I'm looking like censor themselves just because no. of the world we live in now. No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think that you have a responsibility to um, make sure that what you're saying is. We we kind of overuse the phrase punching the right direction. Mm. Um, you don't want to be punching down. Mm. You know, you don't want to be talking about things that you don't have a experience with or that you are maybe a bit on the privileged side of yeah. um at the same time you know i've seen a lot of straight white guys recently doing really interesting and thought-provoking material on trans rights or mm. anything like that and but but they have done it in a way that's they're pointing out something. They're not saying I'm the ultimate authority on this. Mm. They're they're pointing out something that people need to be aware of. And mm. um, you know, there's it's it's yeah. I think anything is open for being talked about and being joked about. You can joke about anything. When but you have the to, reason I asked yeah. for that the question <laughs> is just with the whole Dave Chappelle thing that yeah. happened with what he said. Mm -hmm. Like I know two comedians one has unfortunately passed away patrice o'neill and mm -hmm. uh corey hokum who some of their stuff is really like hilarious but uh -huh. would get them cancelled immediately yeah like like corey hokum has like a bunch of abortion jokes and like obviously i'm not a woman i've never had mm -hmm. an abortion i have no idea what it feels like but i'll be honest i laughed at it it was pretty funny <laughs> yeah. but um like i'm not i don't agree with mm -hmm. like what he says it's just a funny yeah you know a bit of a funny joke and like there's loads of other people who oh, i forgot whatever this guy's name was but he he told a joke about how well i'm gonna butcher the joke <laughs> so bad so it's not gonna be funny but he talks about how he thinks being gay isn't a choice okay because the way you know is because there's uh black gay people in america uh -huh. And there's no way that they're thinking, oh, being black in America is easy enough. Let me just yeah. choose to be gay as well. <laughs> and that's how you, okay, it's so much funny when he does it. I'm not a comedian. I don't really I don't yeah. know how to punch, do the punchline or whatnot, but it just made me laugh so much. But he actually got in trouble for it. He is of, I'm going to assume, Middle Eastern descent or okay. Indian descent. And the girls that, and guys, I think that, were accusing him of uh, being homophobic and racist. Right. Were like white, like prep school kids. Uh-huh. And it was like, 
they were just they had a laugh about it. That like, is the, the thing. irony that <laughs> uh, a non-person of color is telling a person of color. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that. I was recently <laughs> speaking with um, a stand-up friend of mine, and he has a part of his show mm. where he's talking about two friends of his who are speaking uh, Mandarin. Okay. And he's doing part it's it is integral to the bit mm. that he mimics their oh, conversation yeah, yeah. because he is talking about the fact that he didn't understand what they were saying mm. and the bit was fine and it, it like it worked and it was going to be put onto a television show mm. and the producers made him learn the actual mandarin yeah. of the conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. because they yeah. couldn't have him coming on just mimicking mandarin and he questioned it he was a bit like why because the people who he his friends who had been speaking mandarin mm. had never had an issue with the joke yeah and he was a bit like why do i have to learn the mandarin and they were like because white people will write to us to yeah. complain about this yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is always that thing to be offended on behalf of somebody is a very interesting concept yeah, yeah, yeah. um i think yeah i i mean the the piece of stand-up that you're talking about i, I don't know the routine but mm. it sounds like what that person is doing is pointing out an injustice and mm. and making a bit of a joke about it but they're not saying this is okay they're actually what's funny about this is that it's not okay mm. you know they're not saying that you know we yeah. can make we can make jokes at the expense of homo of of yeah. homosexual people or of um any other race mm. what he's pointing out is that this is this is ridiculous yeah, yeah like yeah. <laughs> and here's the funny thing is you can talk about how, oh, I'm so offended, but there's definitely an, a really inappropriate joke that makes you laugh every time. Oh, yeah. I know one that, um, uh, I'm not trying to bring up the Joe Rogan <laughs> podcast, but um, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, uh -huh. I think Ari Shafir and Burt Kreischer, they're talking about a Norm MacDonald joke. Right. And the punchline, it's, it's so bad. I, I'm not even <laughs> going to repeat it, but... I won't lie, I laughed at it, but it yeah. is so bad. Like, it was, it's, it's, yeah. Like, definitely you're in serious trouble for doing it. It's <laughs> not even like he's like saying how bad it is. He's just being like really rude or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I did laugh at it. So I can't like then turn around and go, oh, you're the terrible person. I uh -huh. laughed at your joke, innit? Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can, because there's a huge, um, that that's how a lot of the stand up has come about i think is that there's a there's just the shock factor yeah. it's just i've said something audacious therefore mm. people have reacted you're reacting you're laughing because that's the context you've been given mm. um and there's a huge market for just shock comedy mm. um and it's just about saying something but i think when you go if you're this is another thing is that with this whole cancel culture thing is that a lot of jokes can be taken out of context. Mm. If you take one joke out of an hour long show and you say mm. that joke is problematic, you know, it's, it's mm. not really gonna, it's not really doing the joke any justice. It's not mm. doing the act any justice. And also we get it wrong. Like mm. I've said stuff on stage and then gone, I don't, I don't really think that's great actually. Um, and I've had complaints made mm. to venues about me and stuff mm. like that. And I've had to go away and really think, mm. do I agree with this mm. complaint? Yeah, um, yeah. And ultimately, I've had to make decisions about what I say. Also, <laughs> sometimes it's just, it's just not for you. Like the comedy yeah. just might not be for you. Like I understand if you go to like a, um, I don't know, um, a comedy club and see a, com a comedian for the first time and they say something so that offends you uh -huh. okay fair enough you're offended whatever but if you go buy tickets to a certain person like mm -hmm. i know I, I mentioned jimmy carr and i'm just trying to name well-known comedians yeah. everyone will know <laughs> he is if the you, name that gets mentioned a yeah, lot in this conversation yeah, if you go to jimmy carr knowing that he does say some really uh -huh. crazy stuff and then get offended you've literally just gone out of your way yeah. to be offended like yeah you paid money to to like just complain uh -huh. pretty much and i just think <laughs> it's, sometimes it's just it's just silly to be honest yeah it is it gets a little bit out of hand and i think 
The thing that people don't really realize as well is, you know, so many people are complaining about cancel culture and getting kind of canceled and all this sort of thing. Louis C.K. is still doing stand up. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. calm down. Nobody's losing their livelihoods just mm. yet. <laughs> Especially because people who are canceling other people yeah. didn't even mess with them in the first place. Like, I can't go say I'm canceling Louis C.K. when I've never watched see any of his stand up. Yeah never watch anything that he was in. I can't then cancel him because I wasn't like supporting him in the first uh -huh. place. The only people who can cancel someone are their fans. Yeah. That's it. But, you know, people just want to be part of the trends. Yeah. I mean, talk, like it, with the BLM protests in America, especially in LA with all mm -hmm. the social media stars that were like pretending to like do all that stuff. It's just yeah, people wanting to be part of yeah people just want to be a part of the traction the snowball mm. you know people just want to get on to whatever the current topic is like you know so many people standing in solidarity with ukraine right now mm. and i'm just like you know okay but you're just gonna move past this in a few days and yeah, post, like and post your next and, thirst trap like yeah, it's like the iraq and palestinian <laughs> thing like yeah that's still going on exactly no one just to it. and people are people are complaining about the fact that they haven't opened the borders for ukrainian mm. citizens and it's like okay but we also haven't opened the borders for syrian citizens yeah. or like just because they're like basically white yeah, yeah, yeah. It, people running from war yeah, yeah it's suddenly much more dramatic and much more something mm. that people want to get on board with. And it's like, and now I, I think there's nuance to that as well, because of course Ukraine is part of Europe yeah. and we're in the European yeah. Union, protect your own, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I do think there's a lot of hypocrisy going to happen yeah, with all yeah. of this. And I'm honestly intrigued to see how it plays out. But <sighs> I mean, it's going to be crazy. I, I mentioned it to somebody the other day and they were just like, oh, China's going to invade Taiwan next. Oh, <laughs> and yes. I was like, great, World War III. No, no. If you they, are think... shocked by the events right now, mm. you've not been paying attention. Like World War III is exactly where we've been headed the past few yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, oh, it's, I actually have friends who have family in Ukraine mm -hmm. and all that. So I, I so heart goes out to them and hope that all their families are fine. Yeah. This got really dark. This got really deep. Like, yeah. It's got deep. Now, quickly before we end mm -hmm. up, because unfortunately we're hitting that 30 minute mark, do you have any gigs coming up? Anything to look out for? Um, I have. Do you have a set online? I don't have any sets online. Oh. I do have one clip of myself doing, um, it was an event a couple of years ago called Bright Club, mm. um, which is actually where they get um, academics to do stand-up material. Mm. And I was invited to do it as an academic at the time rather than as a stand-up. So I have that clip online, mm. which um, is called called uh, Death of the Artist. If mm. you put in Death of the Artist and my name, you'll find mm. it. Um, and that's something I'm quite proud of. Uh, and then otherwise, um, I do a podcast myself called the Untitled Twitch Stream Podcast. Mm -hmm. We are all about brevity. Um, <laughs> we stream five nights a week on Twitch. Uh, we It's a live podcast interactive experience. And mm. then you can listen back on YouTube and Spotify. We are currently taking a break because um, a friend of ours recently died and wow. we're just taking a little bit of time. Um, mm. And But we're hoping to be back really, really soon. So that's um, on Twitch. Um, in terms of shows, I'm going to be in Edinburgh a bit. I gig regularly at uh, the Monkey Barrel Comedy Club in Edinburgh, um, which, uh, you know, if you're just looking for a good night out, I'd recommend going there as well. Um, and I think I'm going to be at the stand soon in Glasgow. Um, yeah, if you follow me on social media, you can pretty much find it all. I'm at a man comedian on all socials <laughs> yeah well, i'll make sure i'll put everything down in the uh, description thank you very uh, much thank you for coming on you know? yeah cheers this was great <laughs> sure man make sure you go uh, again like i said i put everything down in the description thank you for coming up back for another episode and make sure you tune in next week too peace